Please welcome our next speaker, Mohamed Atif, a VP of Solutions and Services. Today, he will be presenting Dynamics 365 FO successful implementation and user adoption. Please stick around after Mohamed's session for a live Q&A. Hi everyone, thank you uh, for joining my session at DynamicsCon. Um, and uh, good uh, morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, depending on which part of the world you have joined my session. So first of all, thank you. And thank you for DynamicsCon to giving me this opportunity to share uh, my knowledge um, and the experience, what we have learned it over the years with the wider community so that other can take the benefit. Uh, today, so I will cover my topic uh, around the Dynamics 365 successful implementation and user adoption. Uh, so before I start talking about this uh, topic, uh, let me introduce and give a little bit background about myself. My name is uh, Muhammad Atif. I'm the VP Solution and Services for Magic Global. We are the Microsoft Board Partners. Uh, and providing our solution and services to uh, Dynamics uh, 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 customers. Um, I got the 20 plus years of uh, solution design and delivery experience. Um, after my graduation, I started uh, as a coder. I was the C++ uh, coder writing software uh, for different companies. From that point on, I moved my career path into the solution design and then come into the team lead and the delivery side. So quite happily now supporting customers. And right now I am empowering and supporting many of our customers in their journey to digital transformation. From the qualification side, I have done my master's in the business system design from one of the University in London, University of Westminster. Uh, I lived in uh, London uh, since 2001. Um, and then while I'm doing the, all the consultancy and supporting all these cons uh, our customers, I'm also actively involved in the Dynamics community. So I'm the community leader for D365G, London Evening Group. Uh, I'm also part of the uh, community for D365UG for Pakistan chapter. I'm doing multiple, uh, several sessions on this, uh, in different community sessions. That is the Scottish Summit and the D365 Saturday. And uh, I'm happy to be and excited to be here to share my, again, my experience. So when I'm not sitting in front of computer or dealing with customers' issues or delivering the solution, I'm managing my kids and uh, enjoy my time with friends and family. Other than that, uh, I would love to play badminton and whenever I get a chance to do that type of So that was all about me. I got my LinkedIn detail there, so feel free to contact me should you wish to ask anything or require any sort of a support or help. Okay, so let's move into the main topic. When we talk about the implementations and in the software world, there is a methodology, there is a life cycle, which is the SDLC, Software Development Life Cycle. Um, so what is all about? What do we talk about in this? So there are actually methodology we deal with. What is methodology? This methodology is a process. But if you will see them very closely, they actually talk about the similar sort of steps or the phases we go through in that methodology. And such as we start with the analysis, requirement gathering, uh, we talk about designing, we talk about implementation. So once we have done all these things, we do the implementation, then we hand over this to our testing team. And testing team verified, obviously uh, we work with the customers, get their testing done, and once everyone is happy, we deliver this solution into the production environment so that's the deployment we talk about and then once the is the the solution is live then we uh, go through the maintenance uh, and this is the post go live activity so 
why we come across with the issues in some of the projects, if not all, there are always some challenges we deal with. So what are the reasons if everything's moving around the same cycle, there are the same phases. So, so if what exactly happened, let's talk about a little bit more. So when we are delivering any sort of our projects here. So sometimes the projects, when we talk, they are either complete. There could be several integrations. There could be multiple departments. And when we are talking about the multinational company, they could have their presence in the different region, different country. Then these things create the complexity. Talk about the very first thing, when we are going to deliver any solution, we talk about do we have the requirement? And when we are talking about the requirement, sometimes uh, requirements are not finalized. People are coming up and use the client's new requirement. They are keep coming up with some new ideas. So the scope gets bigger and bigger day by day. And this is normally happen when we are dealing with a complex project or maybe we are doing any sort of a digital transformation program. And as a business are uh, normally trying and you thing, they are trying to work out because they, on the one side, they have a technology. On the other side, they have their own processes. They are, they are delivering services for their business. So they are coming up new ideas. And every time these things bring more challenge. So when we talk about the requirements, so this is from the business side. The requirements are, can be challenged or it can very uh, continuously change. There could be some technical challenge which we face. And this challenge could be like uh, the number of system needs to be connected, integrated. There could be a legacy data when we are migrating from the old legacy solution. There could be a, a legacy data which needs to be considered. So that's bring again another challenge which needs to be considered as part of the digital transformation. Then we talk about the security. We are bringing new platform. Now, there could be a regulatory uh, requirements that you need to ensure that you've got the very policies in place so no one else can access the solution. So these are the stuff with which uh, you as a technology partner needs to consider and not be dissolved. No, they can be because the, these are in the end the technology where you can get some support. There are always some solution available. In the end, you can also connect with your peers, your community to get some solution there. So what is the problem then? When we talk about the problem, so in the overall, as a very high level um, view, if we talk about the implementation, so problem is all about the people. As I mentioned in my earlier slide, that it's about you, it's about me, it's about the people we work with. So there could be people who are not comfortable with the change we are putting it in the organization. They are reluctant, they are hesitant. Maybe they got the ego problem and there could be some political reason they don't want to uh, have some new solution in place, this problem. Do we have any solution? Yes. And this is where we talk about that we have to consider our user adoption. So when we talk about the user adoption, so successful adoption is actually required nothing but the behavior change. We need people. We need people to unlearn the way they were doing their stuff previously because they have been doing it from day one. They were sitting there for years and years and they have some process defined. So they are in their comfort zone. Now we are trying to introduce something. It will obviously hurt them. It will take their effort, their time to learn new things. So what you need to understand and make them understand that these are the things uh, that they need to stop doing it. And sometimes it's most difficult part to tell someone, sorry, you were doing it, but this is not longer appropriate to follow the same process. You have to change. So these are the challenges you will face. So we need to make sure 
that we are working and understanding people and their problems. And then we talk about that how to change it. So this new adoption, new solution, digital transformation is not about just learning a new app. It's actually and fundamentally uh, different ways of working. And what we say, this change is about people. User adoption is nothing. It's all about the people. Okay, so how do we deal with these people? How we help them? How we make sure that they are engaged? So if we will program from the early stages of the phases of the project, then they will be familiar with the stuff what is happening. And it will help us uh, uh, in the user adoption because it will go naturally. And it, so if we do the people part right, it will help you and, and will contribute to make your project successful. Okay, so just to summarize, what are the hurdles we may get uh, during the, any sort of um, successful implementation when we talk about the technology, having our new technologies is more than a technical migration. And here uh, you need to deal with the, actually the human behavior because they will again resist why I need to do this. And this is the example we talk about. For example, uh, HoloLens. This is great technologies from the support point of view. British Gas is coming. They got the, the all the engineer got the HoloLens. They are resolving issue literally there and there. Or as a engineer, you are working for the uh, British Gas or some other people, right? They are supporting. And if you ask them to use, yes, you need to make them understand why it's happening. There are great advantage of using the technology, but if you don't explain it, then you always have a pushback from the end users that we don't want to use it. So explain them. So consider the situation when we talk about the COVID situation nowadays. We were all in the normal practice. At least half of the uh, people, I would say, in the organization that they would love to come in the office. They are more comfortable sitting in the office and doing their job. They never imagined that they, need, they can do all their businesses. But so considering it, either people are reluctant or they get into the situation where they have no option. So we need to consider. So sometimes we need to do the soft play. Sometimes it has to be hard. And it has to come from the top management that we need to follow. So if we push user, we support them. Now we talk about the adoption approach. So it could help to accelerate or it can break things, the whole implementation, because it depends how you define your adoption. What is the framework you follow? We need to understand the team member who will be participating in the program. And we need to sell them the value of the new services. So this is a brief summary and example. I have put it in front of you. So you know what you need to consider, how you can manage and what you could face. If you deal with it before time, your project will be dealt with nicely. Okay, and it will go smoothly. Okay. So in my next slide, actually, I will be talking about the adoption framework. These are some of the phases. And again, this is not hard and fast that you have to follow all these three phases. No, this is based on the experience, based on the community, because a lot of people have delivered. This is not the first time we are delivering these uh, services or the solutions on the Dynamics platform. So these are the framework based on the multiple feedbacks from multiple people who has contributed. That's what can be a successful. So we will talk about what, how we can make things happen. What are the areas we as a partner or the end user should consider? So phase one is all about the alignment and strategize. Uh, how do you define your strategy? Then uh, we talk about the phase two, how to promote for their training, 
uh, and understanding, ma making sure they are comfortable. Then in the phase four, uh, it's actually where you execute the program, you run it, you do the implementation, and then you make it live. And the last one, you continue to measure reinforce. So if I will briefly talk about a few points. So the first thing we have noticed and observed, the companies were most successful only those companies were most successful when they had a clear vision for and they knew how they would be uh, taking the advantage and how would they would be using those new technology. So we, when we are talking about the companies who were most successful, so these are the companies, they had a clearly defined vision. They knew how they will be using the new technologies. What uh, how they will be uh, taking the advantage of uh, those uh, new technologies. So those companies were very, very successful in their digital transformation. Uh, and if we are getting some direction, uh, use of new technologies, those companies always taking, uh, getting more help from the other leadership in the program from the organization. So we need to consider we take support uh, and have a very, very, clear we are trying to achieve it through this program. When we talk about the end user, we are understanding the business objective that what we will be the challenges. So sit with the end users, conduct these surveys, and these are the people who understand the what sort of challenges they face on day-to-day -day basis and deeper understanding into the current uh, challenges, strategies, and the goal. Uh, you can also include in those sessions your departmental leads, your business lead, your representative, your customer service lead, your IT people who understand, who can help you brainstorm uh, in your Dynamics 365 platform, that how this platform can help, what you are looking for. So these are the stuff you, you, you need to consider. Now, when we talk about the awareness, the promote and prepare, we need to conduct, engage user. So do the uh, session, to uh, do some posters uh, in the cafeteria, have those uh, activities, to engage people so they understand what exactly happening. You may want to do the launch campaign, that everyone tried to bring everyone on board that this is what going to happen and these are the benefits. So everyone knows what going to happen. So they will be there. You can do the town halls. And then you prepare for their training, you understand it. So start engaging all those end users, their SMEs, their champions. So they are slowly getting into it before you have your program ready. And in the last, when you go on live, you do the measurement and you do your reinforcement that do we have we achieved those uh, objective and the goals what we were targeting for. So that's the ongoing activity. So in next few slides, I will be covering these few points so we can all understand what exactly needs to be done and that would help you to make your project successful. Okay, so first, um, most uh, important part and whenever we are starting any sort of a, a digital transformation implementation or the uh, data six five implementation. So we need to have a perfect uh, project organization structure. That should be the representation of all your key stakeholders. So if we talk about a couple of points from the executive sponsor, so he's the person or the, they are the group of people who will help the project team identify and prioritize their business need. They can play a very important role in communicating the vision to the leadership across the organization. It could be a multinational company where they need to be aligned. So the executive sponsor can help in the communication. They can also help you to get attraction from the other part of the business to participate in and use the Dynamics 365 capability. And that would help and drive the reinforce adoption. And uh, based on the uh, stats, the around 87% of the successful implementations 
and the transformation had the visible engagement by the executive sponsor. So while they are around, they are supporting it, they will support the whole program. Okay, now talking about the business owner, uh, this is another critical area where we need business owners to create an adoption plan to drive usage and realize value from the Dynamics 365. That what we'll be delivering, they need to understand what uh, they want to achieve it. And then second most important thing, that they will ensure the communication and training for their team members, for their department are successfully implemented. So they will be contributing from their day-to-day -day engagement in their specific area. And the third is the early adopters. What are the early adopters? It's actually a group of people from the different areas, different line of business who are participating in the this uh, program, they will share their pain. They will understand it and they will be there to advocate your future planning and the engagement with their team members. And that, that's what they will be doing it. So if we choose the right early adopters team members, they will help throughout the program until it goes live and even post go live actually, who help training, uh, train their team members. And these are the people who will first understand it. They can uh, uh, map, map their current process with the new solution. And they can then do your uh, representation to their team members. And it will be easy for them to explain. So executive sponsor, business owner, early adopters, champion, project management office again. These are all the three areas where we need to have our representation a business as well as on the partners so to make this project successful okay uh, moving on quickly and uh, talking about the end user survey why do we need to the to do that what sort of uh, challenges you have been facing so you need to identify the important business objective and challenges uh, and start to recognize the area of uh, opportunities to improve work process. So those people will help. They will help you to understand what are the key objectives and challenges they are facing it on day to day basis. Then you obviously need to host a workshop where you can sit with all those people, understand, do that some deep dive session to understand those challenges. And uh, and obviously you need to have people from their department, the head, having people from the IT. One of the challenge uh, we have uh, noticed um, and observed in multiple implementation that IT, we engage IT in the very late stage when we are ready for the deployment or near around that time, we engage, engage IT so they can, they can share their pain. Engage with those people who have uh, considering, us, who make noise, so that you can understand their pain as well. So all those points, so you can do your preparation, you have your reports ready, which you can use it in your next step of the program. Okay, and when we talk about what sort of a question you will be asking uh, during in your end user survey, so you need to understand it, how the solutions relate to organizations, broader strategy, goals and objective, this is important. Let everyone understand it, what they want to achieve it. If they are not organization or the leadership is affected. We have to also ask how it will be impacting the ex experience and the work uh, which stakeholders are delivering to their sales customer. So we need to ensure uh, we are getting and achieving all those things. Okay, so this is very important that we do the end user survey at the initial stage of the program. Now, measurable and attainable uh, plan, we have to define uh, our success criteria. On the business side, they need to define it, how they will be achieving uh, what they are planning to do. It. So identify the KPIs that should improve based on adopting various business scenarios. This is very, very important. Okay, establish KPI benchmark and uses Dynamics 365 knowledge. So these are the benchmark 
you will be comparing when you are checking the okay I have we achieved it so define that and you will be sitting with what they are expecting it, it should help also define the criteria to help you show the leadership that okay using the new technologies are you achieving those those uh, for goals are you achieving the result what you are expecting and once you have done the roll out major satisfaction and progress against your benchmark so you need to define all those plan so you can use it uh, after the roll out and during your uh, Uh, program delivery okay next you have done all the preparation you have done the survey you have the uh, project uh, organization and uh, you are ready to rock and roll okay so we are ready to start the project so how do you create the excitement we are starting the project we need to create some sort of excitement there so there could be many things you define as some funny name you create and that's funny name is not rude name but it's funny name so people remember and this is because people are important everywhere when we are talking about user adoption it's all about the people so think about the name which will attract which will uh, be memorized easily and people will like it so or they it will create some sort of excitement that what is this all about and they are keen to understand so do that engage executive responses to kick off the launch throw a party attract the people that okay there is something happening share the knowledge that on some sort of a uh, points or the goals how it will benefit them engage end users distribute banners uh, leaflets uh, put some stuff in the cafeteria to the town hall uh do the newsletter and throw out the program people are keep reminding we are reminding as a business that there are something else happening and they need to be aware of do some sessions uh in the town hall uh explain what, what and keep explaining it what they are achieving share the updates how we are progressing with this implementation okay and uh, to more depending on the organization you can do like people are wearing different t-shirts uh they we are issuing some sort of uh, like pen uh, some giveaways so they know and they are talking about it okay create the excitement now understand an education engagement so we have started the project and this is where the entertainment start i would say right and obviously when we are starting thing there will be things which goes wrong so what happened when things was wrong you will start blaming people oh the person who was working before you was wrong or the platform is wrong you talk about all this thing you try to give as many as excuses possible you don't think in the problem understand it and work out on yourself how to resolve this problem it's not always just putting the blame and walk away try to resolve it okay you can have the war room you can have the regular face to face meeting where you understand and try to engage with people that okay if we got the issues then okay let's try to resolve and understand what is the issue we are we are experiencing so focus on the why make sure employees knows that why the change is happening and what is what is in it for them so they know what exactly they will be achieving it so it's not a surprise for them use their real time real world scenarios task what they are doing it so you can show them how things will work out in their um new solution so they can map it what exactly they are not in the dark okay so real world scenario is important use multiple format when we are doing the education or so training people it depends on the people geography employees varies one person to other person so try different type of for uh, training formats you do it and they will at different multiple formats and then in the end if you have you have done everything you, as a organization sometimes you need to reinforce okay so this is the training stick sometimes you need to hold it and make sure people are getting the training and they are making 
uh, getting their hand dirty so they know what exactly they need to deliver and what they will be achieving so they can contribute and make this program successful because in the end this program will make our organization success um if you uh, uh, we may have some people from the with the ex background here so crp was the another example where uh, uh, the conference room pilot where we were engaging with the end users at the very early stage so they can see it so they can uh, they were not in the blind these are the activities which we need to do it okay so that's all about the understanding uh, um the and educate the engagement okay now we have done all the hard work we are going through with lots of challenges every day there is something after all the effort um, we are going live we are all ready and solution is all done and dusted so what do we need to do it now we need to ensure they have done it their training was done but they are still scared so take them along keep them along with you help them have your champions available who can support them in their day to day activities and then you make sure uh, they are using the system and how you can make sure they are using the system you give them some giveaways some gifts some prizes some gamification stuff right so if you achieve it this thing you will get that award so all those sort of activity will need to be done and when we have done it right you need to do the announcement that okay some people are using it get, highlight it in your reports that people have started using it and they are getting some prizes bonuses whatever is happening they are getting all those stuff maybe you want to do their mental solution is digitalized they can see their results so sometimes you need to give them a uh, soft push sometimes hard push and soft push it okay you are giving them uh some gifts some achievement and you're making for example the sales person you can highlight their achievement the customer service people you can highlight how many tickets they are closing it right so you need to cover those points and highlight it at the same time some people are not using tell them that you will uh, you, you need to follow those uh, training you need to start using it otherwise it could be a, Uh, some say uh, uh, strict or uh, serious uh, conse uh, consequences you may need to face it so sometime you need to do the hard push as well okay now lastly once you have done go live you need to do the major and reinforce so how do we measure it so you need to see obviously the first thing is you can see how many people are using the system how many people are accessing uh, what they are achieving it there are some existing uh, reports available which you can get it from the power uh, platform admin so you can see people are using the system and if they are not using it you need to start reviewing it what are the challenges again go back to the war room understand that what are the challenges they are facing which is making them not to use the system if there are any other concern resolve it and use those end user survey are you achieving all those stuff all those goals or the target which you were anticipating or planning to do it make sure you do it and then do the adjustment this is what you will be doing so in time support and work very closely with your team member and uh, lastly i will quickly complete this one i think we are nearly over time now so just quickly summarize that what you need to do it remember what you need to do what does it mean that you need to engage your users there are different platforms you see in your training okay and reward people so they can they are appreciated what they are doing it they are more attracted so uh, on the screen i have put some link is from the micro uh, soft website so these are the points some uh, you you can follow and read it in your uh, time um and the last one before i complete here that this change is nothing when we are talking about the new technology is required the behavioral change and is more than learning a new app is actually fundamentally learning different way of working so understand it give them uh, some sort of a rewards appreciate it work along with them 
and keep the user engaged as we progress throughout. If you engage them at the early stage, it will make your user adoption very, very smooth. So if they are using the system, your whole implementation, and they will be there to support you in post go life activities as well. Okay, so that's all I have I had it to cover. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, uh, I will be around to answer any sort of a question. I know there are a lot of things to absorb, a lot of things you ha may have to think about. So feel free to question now. And if not, you can contact me at a later stage uh, put my LinkedIn detail in front of you. Um, and in the meantime, I would like to thanks again to DynamicsCon for giving me this opportunity to present and share my experience uh, around the user adoption. I hope you found it useful and please uh, keep learning and keep sharing and uh, we'll connect again. Thank you. Okay, great. Questions uh, from the session. Uh, I'm just trying to read it uh, on my other screen. Okay, there was a question, I think, from, from Mustajab. Mustajab, the question was, uh, is it going to be one of exercise? Um, so Mustajab, just for if you are still on, uh, not really. Uh, if you see that it's going to be one of, uh, it's an ongoing process. So I mean that because this is ongoing activity where you are coming across with loss of enhancement. So first of all, Microsoft on the platform itself, uh, when we talk about the one version uh, and the evergreen concept, which Microsoft has introduced, most of you may have uh, already understand it, know it. So we are regularly getting all these updates and the major updates, uh, just for the simplicity, we get it uh, in April and October. So this activity where we get what is being changed in your solutions because there will be lots of additional functionality business will be asking or you will be adding it or uh, it may, if you are the ISV you will be uh, introducing as part of your product so you need to closely working continue to closely working with your end users and make sure they are following the uh, plan and the process you put it in place when you were implementing the solution. Yes, users, the process needs to be that they are continuously learning themselves, the new technologies, the new platforms, new functionalities, so they are familiarizing themselves and also seeing the enhancement and the capability of the platform because that's the added value when we are deploying and doing any sort of a digital transformation this platform brings lots of value and end users are the people who can see the value if you are actually using the system uh, all their use any sort of implementation there Hope this answer your questions. If you still have uh, required any further clarity, feel free to uh, contact me on LinkedIn or on the DynamicsCon platform. Okay, is there any other question? Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, uh, I think someone asked me earlier that uh, is there any Uh, which 
compile everything and give you uh, one single view for the user adoption. There are different ways you can do the measurement of user adoption. So one is uh, obviously from the Power Platform Admin Center, you can see how many, you can run the reports on the dashboard that how many people are actively using which functionality. So itself is quite comprehensive. So that's one of the tool you can use it to see the, the Uh, in the tool you're using where you can see how many sales they are creating how many uh, how they are closing uh, any sort of a, if they are the customer service people they can see how quickly they are closing it's so based on all these activities and the dashboard you can see uh, and evaluate your user adoption and in case it is not giving you good a sign that people are not using it, then obviously you need to follow the process and do some sort of uh, further refinement in the user adoption. So people are comfortable, review their situation, understand their problem and try to help them so that they are using it. But there is no point to have this implementation or solution in place is uh, was spend millions and millions of dollars uh, on the implementation and users are not happy. So consider all those things when we are uh, putting it together um, and evaluating uh, user adoptions. So consider that. Okay, um, uh, let me see if there is anything else. I think there was another point which I want to highlight when we are talking about the user adoption. So obviously we have talked a lot about the people who are looking, uh, who are, are the key player and the area which we need to consider, but we have to also consider technical parts uh, from the technical side, like the functionality, what they are looking for. So if we see some sort of uh, points like business value uh, and think from the user's perspective that they are, what is, their long-term strategy are they what they are trying to achieve from the, this solution consider it for the long term so that you can have that in your plan consider uh, when you're putting things together and when you're putting your uh, user adoption plan um, so that is very important when you're finalizing and for the users is quite important uh, you're considering the how you will be migrating the data. So this is all technical side as part of the implementation we do consider, but when it comes to the end users, if the data is not representing what they were expecting and how they were using it, obviously that's coming from the legacy system, they expect better, not worse. So consider the data migration functionality. Are they going to get all the function they were thinking? Uh, and the uh, steps we explain in the session, uh, how we ensure that they are comfortable and they are getting the visibility, CRPs and everything. So use that uh, uh, opportunity where you are engaging with the users. So that is quite important. And then the important area when we are talking about the user adoption is the usability. Whenever we are putting any functionality together, consider how is that going to impact the user's experience? Are they going to be comfortable? They are okay uh, or they will feel any sort of a challenge there or is that going to impact their performance? If I'm, uh, I'm the customer service representative and I'm taking some sort of a case, filling in information, if the navigation is not correct and if the fields are not correct, it's completely going to impact the user adoption and they will be pushing back on them. So consider all these areas when we are doing it. And the last part is obviously the performance. So no matter how good is the solution, how good is the interface, the navigation, obviously when we talk about the D365 is the platform we are using it to implement our solution so we don't have the full flexibility like we do as a custom solution but there are still a lot of things you can do it but on top of that if the performance is not good of your solution is going to be a big challenge for you so consider these things while you are considering the user adoptions user adoption i would say is not the least thing you should consider it is 
quite important as part of your ongoing activity when you start finalizing your lectures you have to consider the user adoption and the plan how you will be ensuring that your user will be actually using the system and they will be getting what they were looking for from the solution okay is there any other question i hope i clarify what you're looking for and again if there is any further question hang on jack you got the question let me see how do you like to major user adoption have each function again on this one uh, as i said first of all on the user adoptions you got this uh, admin uh, power uh, platform admin uh, center where you can see how many people are actively using the system and then yes uh, i think from the each functional area i would say to have some sort of a dashboard so uh, each area is representing and user adoptions metrics uh, how will be or uh, preparing the kpis that what they they will be expecting when the solution is in place compare it do the measurement and each functional area will be providing that or they should be compiling or creating some sort of a dashboard so they can do the comparison to what they were expecting and not what they are seeing it and if there is any, it's not good then they do some further discussions and we put the plan together to make it better. Hope this answer your question, Jack. Thank you. I like your questions. And long um, session for someone because it's not includes the first testers architect and it's not just the train trainers or the project manager responsibility or program manager to make this happen is everyone contribution to make it success okay any more questions okay if you don't have it now feel free to get in touch later on if you come across with any questions or any clarity required or any and again thank you everyone for joining my session hope you find it useful and i look forward to you all again thank you